live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now here's your host, Stu Miniman. Welcome back to the Cube, SiliconANGLE Media's flagship program here at VMworld 2016. I'm Stu Miniman. Happy to have joined as my guest host Keith Townsend, and happy to welcome to the program for the first time someone that actually knows the Cube, been around many events that we've done over the years, but first time on the program, Gil Schneerson, who is the vice president and general manager of the VX Rail product line inside the EMC Converge Platform Division. Gil, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. So, so Gil, uh, you know, we, we've we've been at uh, many events that that you've been part. Of. Of, uh, remember when EMC launched uh, the V Specs program? That was something you know your, your team ran. Uh, you kind of watched this emergence of you know reference architecture, converged infrastructure, now hyper converged infrastructure. For our audience, give them kind of a little bit of your background and uh, the longitudinal view as to what you've been seeing in this space. Sure, you know we've been dealing with this for you know five six years now, where customers basically want to shift their responsibility of building the complete infrastructure stack from themselves to somebody that can give them the service level that they require. Um, and VC has been the, the forefront of all of that, leading the way in creating market leadership for converged system based on um, what is otherwise discrete components that could be put together. I'm adding a lot of value and then um, a few years back we recognized that there was another way whereby if we just recommended a recipe um, and let our channel partners build it for them, we will get to a similar end result, maybe not as rigorous as a V-Block, and we called it V-Specs, as you noted. And we ran that for a few years, and then we realized that um, more and more customers are shifting towards a integrated system versus you know, a recipe methodology. Um, and at the same time, hyperconverge starting to um, emerge, and so I've shifted my own personal responsibility into what is now the uh, VX Rail appliance um, motion, so our hyperconverged. Um, appliance for VMware customer. All right, so you had, this isn't your first generation of the hyperconverged product. There was the EMC version of uh, Evo Rail. Uh, seems to be a, a big difference in kind of the customer adoption. You know, congrats, you know, talk a little bit about the momentum and what you've learned so far since you've lost this product and may, what's, what's kind of the big delta between, you know, last year when we were talking about this and, and today. The big difference is that um, we discovered that in order to deliver a system that can be surfaced, serviced and supported, um, hardware and software needs to be designed and built in context. And so whether there was, you know, before there was a program you know, that came out from VMware, we were one of many players, but there was some disconnect where um, the, the software was you know, on, one, on one roadmap and the hardware was on a different roadmap in the system, they did not come together well. And so last year we have changed up um, the motion and we've become exclusive with VMware and we, div we, we've actually formed a joint engineering team, uh, VMware badge employees, EMC badge employees. We changed the business model, we've become much more transactional. Um, and what we also added is tons of configurability, which was a big inhibitor in the previous. And we relaunched the product um, in February. And from what is truly a, a um, let's say a challenging <laughs> year, has become a phenomenal, phenomenal adoption. We have picked up hundreds of customers since February. And the reason that's happening is because what we've done is we've created the ultimate consumption model for a VMware customer. Assuming that they already have VMware, that they already like VMware, that they have the skill set in place, we are providing them the economical benefits of Hyperconverge without taking away from the already known and trusted VMware environment. And I think customers really like that. So, Gil, talking about that value of support system between uh, EMC and VMware, VCE, one of the great advantages of ACI is time to value. I can get my ACI deployed within minutes or hours. What about day two? What's the power of ACI for managing uh, beyond that time to value? People want hyperconverge for three main reasons, in my opinion. They want to start really small, they want to grow at very small increments, and they never want to migrate again. So everything boils down to those reasons. Now for a VMware customer, there are other choices, obviously, um, to get to the same economical benefits, but those 
take away that um, environment and add you know, a new vendor and a new storage management framework, a new replication, a new support model. And so there is a trade-off, and we are offering that same economical advantage without that trade-off because it's a VMware product. Now, day one is, I think it's very astute what you said, because day one happens only once. Mm -hmm. um, but day one happens only once many times for many appliances, point number one. Point number two, lifecycle management for the VMware stack all the way to the hardware done in concert um, happens on an ongoing basis. And the ability to never migrate again when you keep adding nodes to those clusters is massive because that is a true saving. Um, and and it, it, it allows us to never plan. It allows you to start small, only get what you need, um, and not worry about the migration cost and the CapEx investments. And so people really look at this... Um, and there are many other benefits. For example, you can manage your entire environment from that VMware team, right? So hyperconvergence takes away components and everything else that's needed to manage them and simplifies everything. So um, I think customers are seeing those um, advantages very clearly. Um, and, and in fact, some of the conversations we need to have is when hyperconvergence is not a fit. So along those lines, you talked about customers not wanting to ever mi migrate again. Scale, what's the ceiling of a hyper-converged solution? So again, remember, I'm focused on that VMware customer. So I will be giving them the scale that vMware allows them to get from a vSphere cluster. And after that, they could have multiple clusters, and they could all be managed through a vCenter. So this whole conversation about infinite scale really boils down to what do you actually need? If you're running vSphere, we will give you the scale to match that vSphere cluster. And if you're running many clusters, you'll get many. So I could either argue infinite scale, or I could say 64 nodes. The point is, within that context of that VMware environment, we deliver the consumption model that allows as much scale as that environment can take. So Gil, you've got a long history working with the channel. Uh, I, I know hearing from Chad, he said, you know, he wants every VBlock customer to also, you know, get a VX rail so that they understand the HCI um, to get a footprint in there. But can you talk to kind of the channel engagement, getting new logos, you know, and any specific training or, you know, key use cases that they're looking at uh, for the VX rail to kind of, you know, drive that adoption? Um, over 90% of our sales are channel, which is, um, impressive. Um, only 40% 40 of them are DRIs, which in our language means not known to EMC prior, so deal registration incremental. Um, channels have embraced um, VxRail, and channels are also important because every hyperconverged solution requires meddling and leveraging the customer's network. So networking skills are paramount, and VMware skills are paramount, because you're going to deploy it in a VMware environment. And many of our larger channel partners deliver just that, and so that also produces you know, a revenue opportunity for them uh, for services around and planning. Um, so, so there is great adoption, and there's um, many new logos um, through the channel as well. Um, training, we are, we, we are not heavy on training because we assume that those VMware partners know VMware. Right? So we're leveraging a lot of the existing. I can tell you that going forward we'll be a little more rigid as to what um, prerequisites channels need um, in order to, um, to deliver deployments properly. So, Gil, it's been officially announced now that the Dell acquisition of EMC is going to close September you know, 7th. So, so close the hurdles. I, I know everybody's excited. A lot of work's gone into that. It's also been reported that you know, very soon we will see you know, the Dell you know, compute in the VX rail. Um, I've talked to some VX rail customers that are using the Quanta-based solutions. They kind of like it. They don't seem to have much preference. Will there be choice? Will it be Dell only? How do you handle the migrations? Can you speak to that? First of all, who has yeah. reported that that's going to happen? I, I, I think it was a quote from like Michael Dell saying that was there. Okay, and yeah, I've interviewed it. Chad Sackage, <laughs> uh, who has said, you know, um, it's no secret we're working on this. We're <laughs> working on this, and we're going to do this. So it, it, we're going to keep our Quanta platform as it is. First of all, it doesn't really matter that it's quanta because we are selling VxRail and EMC appliance and we stand behind it. So the, 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 the hardware matters less, um, but this is a two by four configuration. We're going to add the alternative configurations um, such as storage optimized nodes, GPU um, nodes, and otherwise uh, based on Dell. And we're going to benefit from the greatest supply chain on the planet, which is going to be very good for our customers. Still hardware doesn't matter though, because software is what pulls everything together. 
And so those nodes are going to be interoperable with the existing um, um, Quanta-based nodes either way. And customers are, are, are seeing that. So they're buying today because they know that they have a long-term um, roadmap in front of them that they can leverage. All right, so Gil, I want to give you the final word. Uh, you know, vSAN's one of the highlights of the show here. Seems strong momentum across a broad ecosystem. As you look at it, you know, why should customers choose VxRail uh, instead of some of the other vSAN choices out there? That brings us back a few years where you could have um, a storage array and a network and a server and you could put them all together. And customers over time decided that converged infrastructure was a way to go. Um, taking vSAN, which is a, a, an excellent solution, obviously this is core to our product, um, and implementing it over a vSAN ready node, for example, means that you still have stuff to do. For example, maintain um, compatibility between firmware and vSAN versions. Um, and, and it also means that you have to deploy vSphere on top of it. So we are giving you the choice through this joint product, which is, as I remind people, this is, this is a product developed by us and VMware together. Fully automate the day one um, implementation of, a VA, of an ESX cluster um, and then take the lifecycle management out of the, out of the equation because we do all of it for that customer. So we, we simply provide more value on top of just vSAN, um, but we have become a major part of vSAN um, sales. And I think um, customers were given the choice and, and seeing what level of automations and supportability um, that come into play, they, they make that choice. So we're happy to see the momentum for sure. Well, Gil Schneerson, really appreciate you coming on the program. Happy to have you in the ranks of the CUBE alumni now. We'll be back with lots more coverage here from VMworld 2016. You're watching theCUBE.